Okay. Uh, okay, shall we start? Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, kita mulakan uh, bagi bincangan kita, uh, bagi bincangan kita pada hari ini dengan kita Al-Fatihah. Okay, Alhamdulillah uh, Pertamanya saya ucapkan uh, Banyak-banyak terima kasih Kepada dua uh, Speaker kita pada hari ini Dr. Uh, Imazul Izzati uh, Dan juga Dr. Nik Hadian Nik Azman uh, Mungkin saya boleh uh, Share sikit uh, Bukan baru datang, baru datang tak ambil pun kan <laughs> Apalah sebab dah kenal lah sebenarnya Dr. Iman uh. Saya punya roommate Masa dekat lah trot dulu. So, we have a very long uh, kiranya memory together. Uh, but Alhamdulillah lah maknanya uh, actually we invited uh, you because of your expert in this uh, area, microcredential. Uh, so basically Dr. Emma uh, now uh, she's the chairperson of finance at uh, school, Abdul Abang apa? School of Management. School of Management, USM. Uh, and then we have Dr. Nik Hadiah Nik Azman, uh, senior lecturer uh, at the same uh, school. Okay, uh, so basically, um, uh, micro-credential is, is still a new uh, issue, new new topic, new new apa kita panggil, new phenomenon lah uh, yang yang uh, berlaku uh, di Malaysia dan especially di uh, universities uh, dan impact mungkin kita terasa bila uh, everybody is uh, locked down in your own uh, apa office small room small office in your home um, due to the MCO uh, but uh, alhamdulillah rupanya sebenarnya is is a blessing in disguise jugaklah sebenarnya kan uh, so walaupun uh, MCO tapi banyak lagi opportunity saya yang kita boleh grab and one of it is actually uh, by uh, recording uh, your your lesson uh, for the micro credential. So saya tak nak cakap banyak. So saya rasa uh, today is um, we invite uh, Dr. Emma and Dr. Nick to share your uh, experiences uh, in uh, apa uh, involved with the micro credential at USM. So so saya uh, serahkan kepada Dr. Emma. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, thank you Professor Madia Dr. Umi, long friend eh, daripada saya kurus gemuk, kurus balik, gemuk balik, a uh, long time friend. Okay, uh, uh, for inviting us, uh, saya dan Dr. Nick sama-sama. Uh, okay, the first rule of doing micro-credential is smile. Ah, uh, Because when you video, if you do not smile, people are not attracted to your video. Oh, so macam kita orang ni dah planted lah, macam pramugari kan, dah planted smiling face. Alright, uh, so um, I, I'm expecting that this thing is more towards santai but I also, I think untuk menyantuni uh, pihak UAT USIM, saya juga telah sediakan slide. So may I share the slides uh, uh, ni, uh, Dr. Mi? Yeah, sure, sure. Alright, sekejap ya. I first time guna Zoom, selalu because we all guna Webex. Right, oh, we, all, we all ada Microsoft Teams ah, Tapi oh. Zoom ni pun ada jugalah So, dua-dua lagi terang pakai Ah, Orang macam I, I just click-click-click je lah ya Yes, please Nampak ke sekarang? Hmm, belum lagi Belum lagi Okay, dia kata okay. you are okay, sharing dah. Okay dah. Nampak. Alright. So, okay. Uh, uh, my name is Emma Izzati. Uh, Nick Hadian is uh, my colleague. So, basically, tajuk you all yang you ni bagi adalah what do you know about micro-credential? Let's hear from USM experiences. Okay, because it says experiences. So, kita orang tak adalah stress sangat kan? Tak formal sangat. So, uh, okay. Nampak tak pula. Alright, so uh, we are going to basically share uh, on several uh, topics, uh, topics lah ya. Yeah. Uh, 
I am looking my credential ni macam an ideation or kalau you obvious kita kita finance kan uh, most of us are finance people dia macam sandbox things lah eh. Uh, new thing that is not uh, is not grounded yet but then we we must do. Right so we will start with our humble mission and then Dr Nick will share her experience and both of us will share the our support system and the technicality part the challenges and what we are looking forward uh, in the micro credential punya uh, nilai ya eh? so we start with humble mission basically our mission when we started off this micro credential ni kita orang ni macam suka-suka hati je buat suka-suka nak buat however along the way when we produce more and more videos we found that we have responsibility because why and uh, for those who uh, haven't seen our video our videos are mostly being uploaded in youtube uh, ramai yang macam segan nak masuk dekat youtube because tak nak lah tak nak tunjuk muka lah tak nak tunjuk video sendiri lah semua semua thing um, I, i will share with you macam mana you can bubur dalam youtube tapi you don't have to public public it lah Okay, but we choose to public it because after a while we found that we have responsibility. The first one, our mission is actually to encourage all Malaysian educators to become geek educators, right? Without revoking on Islamic values and morality. Because now you know content dalam YouTube, be it a marketing, be it finance, be it uh, operation, whatever content has been orang kata intertwine disulamkan dengan sampah konten-konten yang tak bermoral hanya untuk menaikkan dia punya konten so we educators dengan our orang kata PhD Professor Madya we have established that ground eh? we must flood the internet with the true ilmu true path we must feed viewers and learners with true path and better alternatives that's why earlier I said to Umi because you all university science islam malaysia and your content memang tak ada dolak dalik ambil benda lain your content memang stay to true path so you have the potential to flood the internet with, with all this uh, uh contents eh? good contents uh, so so that is basically our mission and why the reason we accepted an invitation by me and then okay So people tanya gig educators ni apa? Gig economies ni uh, adalah uh, kita biasa dengar. Gig educators ni apa? So from my point of view, basically gig educators ni macam high learned performer, uh, performer eh, no more macam lecturer, we a performer regardless of whether kita di extroverts atau introverts. People might be saying, ala okay lah Dr. Nick and Dr. Emma, you are extrovert cakap-cakap-cakap. But actually, we are not that extroverts. We are hybrid antara dua. Ada ada certain things yang kita keep keep to ourselves. Kita tak nak keluar. Alright. And gig educators for us, they educate with passion and they sync it with uh, facial expression, hand gestures, personality, voice projection and jolting interest. However, do not overdo it because do not overdo it. Just do it uh, cukup to let audience know that you know the subject and kita tengok many of uh, our uh, fellow uh, friends eh colleagues lecturers eh dia bila dia sampai kan lesson tapi macam baca kan contohnya cap m what is cap m cap m is this 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 is a theory they have to model the asset price things like that but you cannot see the passion when audience cannot see your passion audience know that you don't actually know that thing Uh, using layman terms. Okay. And then, kita takut audience tanya dekat lecturer, cuba explain cap M dalam bahasa mudah. Kita tak tahu. So, we want to avoid that. We want to be geek educators that enable to deliver all around us. That's it. If you want to deliver cap M topic to T20, jug, to T20, we can use the T20 level jargons uh, at the T20 wavelength. And if let's say, can you deliver the topic to professional but non-academic, we can do so. And then can you deliver the topic to B40? Okay, macam mana kita nak tukar all that kind of thing to B40 punya level. So, we are geek educators. And being geek educators actually move us from being a nerd lecturer, okay, yang, yang nerd lah kan, 
to happier ones now. But because we are now no more using the myth. Orang myth, oh, you you orang uh, otak kiri, you orang otak kanan. No, we cannot do that anymore in this uh, in this era. Eh. We must fully capitalize on both brains. Kenapa pula kita nak use one brain? That's why micro-credential allows you, bagi you opportunities to uh, to 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 mix the potential of left brain, the logic, kita punya analytics, and macam mana kita nak produce it using the right brain. Uh, macam how to make it happy. So that's what uh, at least we meant by geek educators. Eh? And then micro-credential, and we know OBE, things like that, and people talking about student-centered learning, student-centered learning. So basically for me, student-centered learning is about giving back the honor of learning to students, right? And however, the challenge is, lecturer ni, kita ni beria-ria, right? Oh, kita lah beria-ria belajar, kita beria buat balik soalan tutorial, kita baca, kita mengajar, kita uh, kita buat soalan, kita yang jawab soalan. Alright. Uh, now we want to give back the honor of learning to students. Now we want to touch, not to so deep, okay, but we want to guide them how to do things. Alright. Um, so that, and micro-credential can help us to do that. Alright. Alright. Now, why we think that um, micro credential and the concept of micro credential must be up up to par. Eh? Okay, uh, kita semua lecturer and we know about the Bloom's taxonomy. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And uh, some of the questions, some of the questions, kita formulate uh, how many percent. Remember how many percent. Understand how many uh, percent apply. However, today student. To these kids, to these eras, dia tak macam tu. Alright? Dia, dia no longer uh, wants the question uh, that deals with remember. Why? Because the nature now, the situation now, their surroundings now is like this. The reality is like this. For example, an eight-year-old boy, my son, for example, playing online games using English jargon. Let's say they play, he plays Minecraft. He doesn't ask me, Mommy, how to play? He doesn't even memorize the character. Yes. He, uh, he, he didn't even open dictionary to look for certain slang or certain words from there. They just plug play, terus. And then they learn from that. They learn starting from the application. They tak ada remember, they tak ada understand. They terus mind. Right? The remember and the understanding part is already embedded the application. For example, the word sandbox. I only, uh, I only discovered the word sandbox. Okay, uh, at the age of forty three because of fintech. Eh? Fintech kita ada sandbox framework, regulation, regulatory things like that. Eh? So I started to use the word sandbox, sandbox. However, my son knows its meaning and application at the age of eight years old due to online game. So now show that the the gap of the learning uh, level tu sangat uh, tinggi uh, uh, following age yeah all right so for for us and for me personally i think that uh, students uh, they appreciate more if we started to use application Uh, they, they, kita Kalau kita tanya student pun, student will say something like this Saya tahu tu, saya tahu tu doktor Tapi nak guna tu macam mana? Saya faham tu doktor, tapi nak guna tu macam mana? Uh, kan, this generation kan, dia tak macam kita Macam kita dulu, tak remember, understand Kita terus, kami tahu benda tu macam tu Tapi macam mana nak guna benda tu? Uh, terus dia macam tu ya yeah? Alright And we are pursuing to become geek educators. Me and Dian, uh, kita orang lah came up with this term. We said that I think we need to become geek educators. Uh, we are becoming geek educators because after doing several videos and MCs, micro credential, we found that first we have to actually maneuver, repackage difficult topics to suit human problems. No more technical or formulation. 
and then after doing several the MCs, the videos, we found that our research kita more on gets more rational. So kalau dulu kita punya research more on kayangan base lah, guna all these buzzword, all this ah uh, ni because nak grant kan things like that kan. Tapi actually kalau kita sit down, look back, okay, what actually the problem of the kita punya surrounding sebenarnya, kan? Okay. So we go back to that, understand the real people, the real problem, and so our research more directly towards that. Like it is easier to maneuver our research towards that. Okay. And the challenge things actually, challenging thing when we do the videos is actually turning academic jargon to serve the uh, normal citizen mindset. Because we need to juggle between high level knowledge and various level of acceptance. Okay, kadang-kadang kita rasa uh, kita cakap tu orang faham, tapi sebenarnya dia tak faham pun. And because of that, kita ada distance between academic and non non academic. And because of that juga, I think we uh, created lah eh, significant reason to create the gap between uh, kita and citizens B40 and 40. And that's why kita tengok lah dekat net pun, dekat Facebook ramai yang cakap. Uh, ala akademik duduk dalam uh, aircon saja pun dia bukan faham kita so it actually it hurts us eh? macam tu because kita tak macam tu we are not the, tapi tapi we have the responsibility untuk turn the academic jargon to be uh, to serve them lah juga ya eh? without without jeopardizing or without uh, apa ni revoking on our intellectual capacity Alright, and then after we uh, after doing several videos, uh, me and Nick especially, we realized that we talk IT more, we talk IT lingo more, and it actually put us on relevant right, nah relevancy right. Okay, so nampak macam keep up to date sikit lah, walaupun tak adalah uh, terlalu IT, tapi nampaklah kita up to date sikit bila kita cerita pasal uh, Titan ke, we talk about uh, apps, gadgets, ni kita ada kita update sikit lah. Eh? And then we don't we wear heels anymore. It's a good thing we don't wear heels anymore because we are super proactive now. Memang uh, pakai kasut, pakai kasut apa? Kasut sport, sport shoes, uh, apa? Uh, sneakers pakai sport shoes saja because we uh, uh, we run a lot lah. We we uh, berlari banyak lah. Eh. Um, because nak cepat semua benda nak cepat. Alright. Uh, we believe being geek educators could bridge the gap between academics and non-academics. After all, kita di dunia ini, uh, kita sebagai uh, uh, tenaga pengajar, ilmuwan, uh, kita punya purpose adalah untuk bagi output something kepada uh, orang non-academics kan. So I think micro-credential can be one of the ways on how we can actually do that, uh, bridge the gap. Okay. Publish dalam YouTube, right? Publish dalam YouTube. Or uh, if you tak nak publish dalam YouTube pun, you buat micro credential and you go to certain platform, but you can sell it, uh, with a lower, much much lower cost. All right, to to everybody. So it serves more fairness lah for me. Okay. Okay. If you have any question, you of course may may uh ni eh? uh may ask lah inter uh, in between. Okay. So ah. Uh, I let Dr. Nick, Nick, you may uh, need to over the experience part lah ya. Hmm. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Dr. Nick Hadian uh, from Korea Management also. Uh, so, so far, uh, Kak Imam mungkin boleh pergi ke next slide. Next slide ya. Okay. Alright. Okay. Ni, uh, I'm sharing about our experience in doing micro credential lah kan. Okay, first of all, what... Uh, there is a lot of uh, experience that we are facing, but uh, these four things, I comprise all those experience into these four things. Uh, first, uh, when uh, we come up dengan uh, how to crack head, macam mana nak fikir ni, nak, nak buat something yang creative input and output. Uh, kita dah creative dah buat script, buat tu, buat ni, untuk buat video, but then in terms of output, macam mana nak edit buat ni, macam mana nak nampakkan benda tu macam attractive so that audience akan rasa macam oh wow okay okay apa ni apa ni what's next what's next so that kinds of uh, uh that kinds of uh, output tu yang kita nak so how to ensure this kind of output first of all kita kena tengok dia punya quality okay quality of the input input tu meaning that kalau kita buat video adalah kita punya script 
Okay, macam mana kita nak uh, tengok kita punya script ni, the quality, the reliability dia, the sustainability and also the standard. Macam uh, macam kami, uh, masa first uh, kita buat dulu, we do not have any template how to do script. We just buat the script. But along the line, we experience, oh tak boleh ni uh, the tema, maybe we need to do uh, this kind of thing. First, kita kena cakap pasal benda ni, benda ni, benda ni. Then, barulah kita closing dengan cakap say hi, bye bye, macam tu. So, we need to make it standardized. And then, uh, second thing adalah how to choose the right assessment and also activity. Uh, like uh, Dr. Edwin said earlier, Uh, she uh, she refused to get involved with uh, the technology. But when uh, we producing uh, micro credential videos, ni, we really need to get involved with that kind of thing. Why? Because the kat sini kita boleh pilih what kinds of instrument kita nak guna untuk assess uh, assess kita punya video tu. Adakah kita nak guna kita punya uh, open ended question? Kita nak guna MCQ question? Or we just stick with our Google Form? Uh, so, uh, student, student ataupun learners ataupun audience, they are keep updating their punya knowledge and also digital things ni. So, we as educators, we need to do so also. Alright, so nanti uh, bila kita dah ada assessment and also we, we got the instrument what we want to use. Contohnya kita nak guna MCQ. So, MCQ questions ni kita nak masuk dekat platform mana? Okay, kalau dekat uh, biasanya yang kami guna adalah kami guna Genially kami guna quizzes, that kind of thing lah yang uh, senang untuk interact dengan uh, audience so that nanti kita tahu kita boleh tracking whether they are answering the right answer ataupun tak so uh, the, uh, lepas tu macam mana kita nak design pula this assessment how to design it, uh, make it macam cantik macam kita nak buat bentuk treasure hunt ke ataupun mind mapping kena concept ke something like that so nanti the last thing untuk uh, assessment ni kita nak tengok kita dah shock dah ni buat sendiri all this time of uh, macam teknologi dia advance punya ni tapi adakah student ataupun audience tu boleh access ha this yang uh, we really need to taking care lah sebab we experience a lot in doing this thing kita dah buat kita dah buat cantik-cantik my mapping uh, dengan treasure hunt but at the end of the story tak boleh access uh, so we need to ensure all these things first okay In terms of uh, technology exposure, we we exposing to the technology a lot while doing this MC. Why? Because because of MC, we know what is Filmora. Because of this MC, we know about Kinemaster. Because of the MC, we know uh, the uh, the available app uh, yang boleh kita guna actually untuk kita educate students. It is not only our PowerPoint slide. Please do not stay to the PowerPoint just. Sebab apa? Sebab PowerPoint ni macam dah old uh, traditional uh, educators guna. So why not we, orang kata, orang kata nak, boleh nak guna tapi kita kena hybrid. Hybrid all that kinds of thing tu. Okay. So uh, kalau ada kat technology exposure ni, uh, kita uh, macam kami, kami uh, macam saya, saya exposure uh, myself to work Filmora lah. Uh, okay. Bila saya nak guna Filmora, I need to ensure that Uh, the videos, uh, the videos tu in a quality one. Okay, in fact, uh, me also, uh, me and Dr. Emma lah, kita orang macam, uh, first, uh, first tu kita orang tak tahu, eh boleh ke guna music ni, boleh ke guna music ni. Uh, at the end of the story, kita orang refer kepada kita orang penyelitian sifu, dia kata no, cannot because that one is ada ada copyright. So, we uh, we have to use the free copyright item. So dekat mana nak dapatkan free copyright pictures ni? Uh, there's a few things. There are few uh, free, uh, website lah yang sediakan uh, contohnya kalau free copyright pictures we can get from Pizza Bay, we can get from Unsplash and a few things, a uh, few uh, web lagi. Kalau music pula dekat mana? So dekat kalau music yang kalau kita nak dapatkan free copyright, so far we found that there is one website uh, call it as uh, Band Song, B-E-N Uh, S O U N D Benson Music a free copyright music. So this uh, this experience uh, we learn a lot while doing uh, micro credential. So uh, along the line, bila kita dah uh, kita dah macam okay kita we feel uh, comfortable and also rasa macam teguh dah sikit uh, producing a video, we get invitation from others, especially from industry lah. We get involved uh, dengan uh, kita orang punya trajectory to uh, uh, course dekat USM which is which is the course is hybrid within, uh, between uh, the uh, the traditional dengan the digital one. Uh, so uh, that kind of thing lah. 
And then uh, we also got invitation by M Bank Group. Uh, they orang pun berminat juga untuk buat micro credential ni for for B40 especially on how to attract their B40 towards using dia orang dia dia orang punya uh, app lah. Uh, so that's the kind of thing our experience so far on how uh, nak daki gunung tu bukan senang. Banyak batu-batu di kuli yang kita orang kena panjat dulu and banyak juga scratch yang kita orang dapat along the line. But at the end of the story, this micro ni, uh, uh, dia rasa macam more established and people will know us. Uh, when people know us, uh, dia orang akan panggil kita dan cakap, okay macam mana nak buat ni, macam mana nak buat ni. Uh, so at that time, kita we uh, we actually, saya Dr. Emma lah, uh, we uh, banyak lah ajar macam mana nak buat ni, macam mana nak buat tu semua tu lah. So uh, tadi, uh, tadi Umi tanya, uh, that one is Filmora, F-I-L-M-O-R-A, Filmora. Okay, okay Dr. Emma. Okay, next uh, let me share with you on the support system and the technicality. Mereka yang membantu kami lah sebenarnya. Alright, I have to say we have a very strong support system. Because the first one, it is a direct, uh, it is a top le down level. It We have direct instruction from VC. Uh, VC kami, Prof Rafik tu uh, autism sikit. Jadi dia dia memang nak, okay, uh, I nak, uh, nak micro-credential from this, 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 this. So direct instruction. So they can move balik, terkejut-terkejut. Uh, uh, okay, Dr. Emma, kita nak macam ni, macam ni. Of course, of course, memang kita tak tahu nak buat macam mana. Tapi buat jugalah, buat jugalah. Eh. And then, uh, From institution, we have Center of Development of Academic and Excellence, CDAE, uh, yang ni yang uh, center under Prof. Karim. Okay. Prof. Karim punya character, one thing, uh, kalau sesiapa yang akan buat di center, Prof. Karim, maybe we, I can share sikit dia punya character. Dia memang aktif in all this micro-credential online. Dia tak penat uh, on all these kind of things. And the most important thing, they appreciate every bit yang kami buat, yang kita buat. Okay, uh, uh, buat video sikit, tunjuk dekat dia. Mesti dia komen yang constructively and and yang best part adalah dia motivate us. Dia tak ada kata, uh, you punya ni macam ni lah, you punya macam ni. Tak, dia bagi je kami, okay, buat, 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 buat. Uh, okay, yang tu satu. And then the support calibration. Lepas tu, and then in terms of DVCA, kami punya Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, dia revamp the traditional curriculum untuk masukkan the new curriculum, the hybrid one, for example, the the trajectory to curriculum study lah. Salah satu curriculum yang ada adalah financial and digital literacy, where it is a hybrid between finance dengan computer science. So uh, kami ni tengah uh, working out lah, uh, working out the the structure, the the thing dalam tu semua. And DVCA, Prof Farhan, dia kata we want it to be in micro-credential. Uh, okay, alright, uh, buat sajalah. Okay. Kita pun ada experience, so buat saja. And in terms of school, eh, our school, School of Management, put MC as one of the trajectory strategies. I can say that because I am in the EXCO members. So, so daripada 2020, Next, uh, next 2021 plan pun kita memang ada. Uh, this, this next year kita target berapa MC kena ada. This year kita dah ada. So far is going well. So next year kita kena ada berapa banyak berapa banyak. And anyway, we we kita dah start expand lah our MC to other courses juga. And we have budget allocated for studio. And orang-orang macam kami lah akan dipanggil. Ah, uh, contohnya Dr. Nick, berapa eh? Uh, apa budget rasa rasa kita nak letak studio ni apa? Kami pun bukannya tahu sangat. Tapi kita tolong sajalah. Okey, contohnya di studio kita nak green screen, kita nak uh, uh, color uh, apa ni wall, wall ni di di uh, di paint color apa? Ah uh, carpet, kita kena guna carpet, kita tak boleh nak guna tiles because nanti dia punya sound pula jadi macam mana kan? Ah uh, even ah uh, tu so detail-detail-detail pun memang uh, kita uh, we help the school uh, establish dia punya ni. It's very the modest one lah, studio modest lah, bukannya yang studio yang yang canggih sangat. But it's good untuk motivate others to do the micro credential as well. And then uh, we revamp our OBE uh, uh, to include micro credential things and IR 4.0 things. Uh, I 
uh, make sure because I am a school member, I will I make sure kalau ada meeting mengenai KPI akan cakap micro credential ni masuk dekat mana? Micro credential ni masuk dekat mana? Berapa video nak kena? I'll, I'll make sure that because I want to make sure that um, the, re the reward is justified lah kepada my team members lah kan. Nak buat micro credential ni bukan senang so kita kita kena kita kena recognize the effort. Uh, of course we have MC team, micro credential team. Bukan ada kami saja, tapi we all pun ada daripada the management. Kami ada business analytics punya micro credential juga. Yeah? And then kami ada active WhatsApp groups. Prof Karim is in there. So uh, selalulah. And then uh, kita akan share, sentiasa share. Uh, lecturer pula, down to lecturers for our, our members. Eh? Uh, we have strong team. Strong team ni bukan bermakna semua orang pandai uh, buat. Uh, contohnya orang selalu cakap lah boleh lah Dr. Emma pandai dalam video buat ni uh, Dr. Nick pandai buat editing semua-semua ni but uh, we cannot work solo lah we, kita kena bawa juga our our friends our friends kita bawa jom join kami okay and kita macam agak penat sikit agak penat however kita guide them alright if you cannot do like what we did never mind you do something else you use genuine, genially for example you use something else Ah, nanti dia bila dah produce video, show to us. And then we try to edit, we try to things like that. So slowly, they will feel comfortable and they are more comfortable to hit the digital wall lah. I could say that my friends ramai yang macam ah, digital-digital ni takut lah nak senyum depan kamera, semua takut lah semua-semua tu. Tapi kita biasa lah kan. Uh, so so we, we we help them, we help them slowly lah to build that strong team. So basically, that is the strong support system that we are building and we already have now. I cannot say that kita orang ni memang dah terror macam No, no, no. Actually, we are at progressing at hit the wall mode lah. Buat je langgar, patah balik. Buat je langgar, patah balik. Salah lah macam ni, tak boleh lah. Structure tak betul semua. So, when we acknowledge that we are in that mode, kita tak stress sangat. Alright, kita more to, kita lebih relax lah. Kita jangan paksa. Tak nak buat, kita nak cakap macam mana je ni. But when we progress, uh, macam ni lah. Uh, we are still patchy here and there. Ada yang tak tahu, ada yang tahu. Semalam pun, I baru tahu satu ads. Uh, and then, uh, so still patchy here and there. And then, first, if UC wants to do, alright, uh, apa ni, GSM wants to do, start with several topics first. Yang simple-simple first. Alright, jangan ambil the whole subject. Ambil the one thing dahulu. Contohnya, uh, macam financial planning kita ada banyak kan. So you ambil financial health dulu. Try dulu. Satu modul, tiga video dahulu. Buat yang sahaja dulu. Ha, kalau marketing, Dr. Alin, ha, ambil satu team dahulu. Buat tiga, empat video dahulu. Kita nak try test tengok macam mana kan. Ha, so so um, macam kita tu juga kita orang. Kita start dengan sikit-sikit. Ha, next year, uh, kemungkinan uh, we are going to impose micro-credential to core subjects. Macam microeconomics, macroeconomics finance, we start, kita dah start dah naik-naik macam tu. Uh, so, to 2021, we are expanding lah uh, the micro-credential thing. Alright, let me give example, two example of our structure. Eh. Kita share our structure lah. This is example of my uh, of our micro-credential financial literacy USM. When we did this, we do not have any structure. We don't have any template board. Uh, so, can we discuss between them? Contohnya, okay, financial literacy ni ada apa? Uh, we are tanya subject matter expert. Ada apa sebenarnya? Team dia boleh apa? So, dia kata, okay, financial literacy dibahagikan kepada tiga team. Financial health, financial wealth, financial freedom. Okay, let's say, alright. Okay, kita, let's say kita put it as module lah. Module 1, module 2, module 3. And then, under financial health, ada topik-topik pula. How to do budget, financial skill, financial. I think ada kita ada lima topik inside there. Lima topik. Lepas tu, and then one topic, kita kita buat rough calculation. Let's say one topic, uh, dua videos. Two videos, five minutes, five minutes. You cannot be more than that because through our experience, more than five minutes, retention rate drop. So, uh, dua atau tiga video. Uh, so, buatlah script and buat video script and then kita buat video. So, three videos and then we have to supply the notes. The notes can be a basic one in terms of powerpoints. Tapi kami dah advance sikit, kami guna any flips. Kami guna canvas and kami ada guna something else lah. 
uh, nak bagi attractive, engaging. Alright. And then we must have activity in terms of either gamification atau quiz. Uh, benda ni semua kami ambil daripada generally macam yang uh, ni cakap lah, I think, I think you open dah memang agak dah, dah tahu lah semua-semua ni. Eh. So basically structure is that. Okay, topic one. Uh, topic one, kita ada video, kita ada notes, kita ada quiz. Uh, topic two pun kita ada. Uh, video ni, 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 ni. Daripada situ, then kita boleh actually move uh, step forward pengiraan SLT pula. Uh, tapi yang tu dah lain cerita lah. Okay, tapi the structure basically for biasa punya is this this one lah. The first structure yang we develop. And then we go to and then we dapat kita project uh, micro credential financial literacy, financial and li digital literacy. Yang ni hybrid program between kita finance and uh, computer science. So kita orang cakap, alright kita ada 14 weeks because this is going to be done according to semester. 14 weeks, kita limit 10 weeks sahaja untuk pengajaran. And uh, Prof. Farhan, the Deputy Vice Chancellor kata, uh, nak dalam bentuk micro credential. Uh, okay, fine. So, kita buatlah. Kata first four weeks untuk finance punya team buat. Okay. Uh, minggu lima hingga minggu sembi, minggu lapan, hybrid. Kan finance ada hybrid. Kita nak cerita pasal e-payment, nak cerita pasal robo-advisor, we want to talk about cryptocurrency, kan. Uh, kita buat yang tu hybrid. Kemudian, basic-basic uh, programming, computer science yang handle. Right, so, this, uh, and then week 13, week 14, kita bagi relax uh, untuk dia orang student concentrate on assignment. This will be done online, right? all online. So, the delivery for each week, video, 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 video. Okay, assessment. Um, uh, quiz lah is up to the the lesson developer Contohnya kalau saya ambil topik number satu It's up to me what kind of quiz that I want to do right? If let's say Dr. Nick ambil uh, topik number tu Dia nak guna gamification It's up to to her Kita kena kita mesti ada variat, variation lah eh, in our assessment Taklah boring sangat kan uh, So so macam tu lah basically the two uh, The two uh, ni lah eh. Let's say Usim had, dah embark dekat micro-credential and let's say you ada project. Kadang-kadang uh, kita nak tengok our part counter partner industri ni pandai ke tidak sebenarnya buat video, buat micro-credential ni. Kalau tak pandai, there is where, there is where you can so-called lead the project. It means that you cakap dengan dia, okay macam ni. We can offer micro-credential modul macam ni, macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. Uh, kita boleh buat macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. It means that you lead the project. You can control the project rather than they instruct you buat macam tu. Yeah? Alright. Uh, okay, Nick, can you sambung Nick? Nick sambung? Okay, boleh, boleh. Boleh, Kak Emma. Sekejap. <laughs> Alright, tengah jawab chat tadi sebenarnya. Alright, uh, so uh, basically kita orang punya micro-credential production ni Oh, sebelum saya lupa, saya nak ingatkan uh, sebelum uh, USIM uh, buat micro-credential ni adalah uh, bagus kalau USIM uh, tahu dekat mana dia nak park all the micro-credential uh, things ni. Macam dekat USM, kita orang ada uh, open learning platform. Okay, open learning platform dekat situ kita orang parkkan kita orang punya modul-modul semua ni. Alright, so uh, okay. Basically, uh, uh, macam mana kita nak buat production on micro-credential ni, kita ada tiga stage. First adalah pre-production. Uh, second, uh, camera action and third adalah post production. Okay, apa tu pre-production? Okay, pre-production tu maksudnya kita, we need to have a script. Okay, like I said earlier, that kind of script lah. Then script kita tu must must have uh, something that uh, cliffhanger factor so that uh, we can attract audience uh, untuk tengok kita punya video tu. Uh, contohnya ada satu video yang saya buat uh, untuk pada current issue adalah saya buat pasal arah nu dengan COVID-19. Ah, so macam mana COVID-19 give, give impact to arah nu. Macam mana ah, satu lepas tu another thing yang saya buat adalah COVID-19 dengan ah, customers view on arah nu. Ah, so that kind of ah, things lah. Mula-mula kita nak buat script tu kita kena cakap pasal isu dulu. Ah, so sekarang ah, isu yang hot isu lah COVID-19 lah. COVID-19 ni confirm lah dia affect a lot uh, and uh, 
uh, one of the institution yang affected juga arah nula even though uh, their profit keep on increasing tapi dia, dia orang punya customers ada yang affected lah ada some of arah nula dia orang tak, uh, tak 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 adopt arah teknologi lagi in fact uh, one of the arah nula yang tak ni adalah arah nula uh, post nature which is kalau customer nak pay atau customer nak redeem dia punya items tu dia orang kena pergi ke arah nula tu kalau from bank perspective tak apa dia orang boleh transfer je duit Ha, but then untuk arah-arah ni yang non-bank and institution ni yang guna the old style lagi lah. Alright, so uh, apa lagi yang kita nak kenal dalam script tu? Of course, kita kena ada facts and figures. Macam kita buat kita punya paper juga. Uh, first, kita kena ada isu uh, and then uh, facts and figures untuk supportkan isu tu. And uh, kita kena ensurekan kita punya storyline. Okay, apa yang nak masuk dekat storyline kita ni? Macam kami, uh, kami masukkan uh, yeah, first uh, dekat dalam script ni kita must be ada intro. Lepas tu uh, dekat dalam kita punya video, we must have intro And then after intro, kita kena ada branding Okay, branding tu contohnya, branding tu ataupun nama nama lain dia adalah montage Kita kena ada kita kita punya own montage Alright, so uh, uh, montage tu short video lah Okay, uh, next kita kena ada uh, content Content, uh, script content tu lah And then kita kena ada ending Okay, ending tu say, uh, see you again, uh, bye bye and please uh, don't forget to subscribe or something like that. Alright, uh, then uh, second stage adalah camera action. Alright, so uh, during camera action ni, orang ingat, oh lah nak buat studio lah pula nak record dalam studio nak guna kos yang tinggi ni. Tak sebenarnya, tak. Okay, uh, kita perlukan essential gadgets je untuk buat ni. Kita punya phone pun boleh kita guna. So dengan syarat kita, kalau kita nak guna green screen, uh, ambil je kain hijau bentang kat belakang. Light, tengok lighting cukup tak? Lighting cukup, oh, buka lampu. Lighting cukup, ah ha, dah. Lepas tu, uh, satu lagi yang kita kena penting adalah tripod. But Nick, Nick, but Nick, I need, I need to share with them how you do the green thing. Uh, I, ha. saya, okay, saya guna green thing, saya punya, saya guna cloth lah, saya beli kain green eh. Uh, Nick lagi best, dia cat bilik office dia kali jauh. <laughs> dah tak boleh cerita. Tenang cerita. <laughs> saya, uh, betul, saya cat bilik saya warna hijau. So anytime, anytime I nak buat uh, recording, I pergi kat bilik I, I dah settle. Ambil tripod satu, letak the phone, uh, record kat mana-mana je kat bilik tu. So tak payah nak book, uh, nak book apa studio ke, nak buat studio ke, no ni. Uh, that one is cost efficient lah buat saya. <laughs> Sebab in, in fact saya suka kalau warna, hijau sebenarnya. Warna hijau apa Dr. Nick? Uh, any kinds of hijau warna tak apa. Warna hijau apa, apa Dr. Apa-apa hijau pun tak apa, asal hijau. Uh, okay. Uh, kalau, okay, kalau, thank you. Let's say you want to buy, uh, boleh tengok dekat Lazada atau kan dekat Shopee. Uh, tengok dia, type, just type uh, green screen. Okay, ah, green screen. Okay, okay. So nanti dia ada lah bagi macam-macam lah kan. Uh, uh. Uh. Alright, okay. Untuk uh, that one is essential gadget lah yang kita kena ada. First, kita kena ada green screen sebab nanti kat belakang nanti kita nak ubah kita punya screen tu kan. Nampak lagi cantik. Uh, second, we need to have a handphone lah, camera sebab kita nak record. Uh, third, kita kena ada tripod. Tripod tu nak adjust angle. Yang mana nampak cantik, yang mana nampak lagi kurus kan. Uh, so that kind of thing lah. Okay, second dekat camera action ni, we have to be careful on sound effect. Kadang-kadang duduk record tiba-tiba, oh, Allah pakcik tu duduk macam rumput lah pula. Kena recording balik. <laughs> so saya usually bila saya nak record dekat office, saya akan datang office pukul 6 ke 7 pagi. Uh, saya kena reach to the office. Kalau pukul 8 tu adalah uh, apa kawan-kawan duduk jalan bunyi tipe kenaik, 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 kenaik. Aduh, <laughs> kena record lagi. Alright, so kalau kita nak gain our satisfaction for recording, kita kena record and keep recording. Lepas tu kita listen. Okay ke tak? Okay ke tak? Okay ke tak ni? But don't worry, kalau tengah record tu kita tiba-tiba cakap, ah saya lupa. Mm, uh, mm, uh, uh, ataupun tak masuk, ah, ah, ah. So don't worry about that kind of thing. Nanti kita boleh trim dengan cut masa kita editing video. Alright, yang tak boleh nak cut adalah sound effect sahaja. Uh, background sound effect tu bunyi aircon lah, bunyi apa lah. That kind of thing yang susah sikit nak, nak uh, kata nak, nak, nak uh, cut lah. Kalau setakat kita, suara kita yang bunyi um, uh, uh, tu tak apa, don't worry. Yang that kind of thing tu kita boleh cut, 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 cut. Alright, so uh, the next stage adalah on the post production. Okay, the post production ni we need to use the, we need to choose the the right app yang kita nak guna. Okay, macam saya, saya uh, will be more uh, comfortable uh, to work the desktop base. Desktop base, meaning that saya kalau tak ada desktop, saya tak boleh nak edit. Tak boleh nak edit saya punya video. Okay, so I'm using Filmora. 
macam Dr. Emma, Dr. Emma dia 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 macam apa kata dia kandas sikit. Ha, dia, dia suka guna handphone. Kat mana-mana dia handphone nyawa dia. Kat mana mesti ada handphone. So dia handphone based person. Kalau handphone based person, uh, there's one app uh, called as Kinemaster. Okay, kalau orang-orang yang tak suka guna desktop, dia boleh guna phone based. Dia boleh edit everything uh, dekat uh, tangan dia jadi boleh edit. Dia gunakan uh, Kinemaster. Ha, ha, si, tunjuk dia punya tu. <laughs> Alright, so that kind of thing lah. Uh, ni depends kepada kita punya, ha, tu nampak tak K, huruf K tu, kena master. Alright, okay. So depends kepada kita lah yang mana kita nak uh, sesuai, yang mana kita, yang mana kita rasa macam lagi comfortable. Alright, uh, so kalau nanti, kalau nak tahu further detail about the production and everything, uh, mungkin uh, Uh, Dr. Umi boleh panggil kita orang sekali lagi ke untuk bagi editable talk pula. <laughs> Alright, Dr. Umi, apa to you. Okay, now uh, let me share with you the challenges. Eh? I think challenges ni adalah yang kita semua dah tahu. Right? Ah, The first one, people. <laughs> so, I categorize it, uh, people. We have challenges in terms of infrastructure, in terms of skills, in terms of reward. Yeah? All right, people first. Not many are willing to get out of comfort zone, especially senior, senior lecturers, professors, associate professors. Susahnya nak suruh, nak, nak minta kerja sama untuk micro credentials. Okay, so selalu yang jadi mangsa-mangsa ni, uh, junior lecturers lah. All right, uh, and then second, um, People sometimes they underestimate your contribution. Com they like to compare research. Oh, I always get that remark. Eh? Alah, hang buat, eh, utara kan. Hang buat banyak-banyak micro credential ni, hantar tak? Benda ni seasonal. Nanti tukar VC, ha? tukar ni semua-semua-semua. But, dengar je lah kan. Kita dengar sajalah. Uh, but, I make sure benda ni masuk, memang masuk dalam KPI. Okay, to, to show that if you say that this is yes, I want to see your seriousness in terms of uh, recognizing uh, us lah, recognizing people eh. Uh, sluggish start lah, we have to say we sluggishly lah, slow, slow, slow kan. And then uh, non-academics and uh, social media influencers are now competing with the same method. Tengok banyak sekarang. Kokom Academy, they have Kokom Academy. Kalau biasa tengok kan, uh, Kokom kan, they have Kokom Academy. They have the patriots are now, uh, patriots are now uh, ada dah nak start buat micro credential. Dia orang ni social tau, social influencer tau. It means that sekali dia orang post, dia orang punya hit button can can cecah ribu. Kita adalah 15 orang kan, itu pun dah bangga gila. Alright, sekarang masalahnya <laughs> apa yang dia orang bagi tu may not be credible. Contohnya, they will post something about uh, history, eh? uh, history lah, something history. May not be credible, may not be, may be only based on popularity. Tapi kita, academic, kita ada tanggungjawab. Sama dia, dia suka, dia tak suka, this is facts. We have done our literature review. These are facts. Tapi macam mana kita nak, uh, macam mana kita nak, uh, orang kata, outwit this social uh, media, eh? So that's why university, kita mesti ada satu gabungan ataupun kita kena perbanyakkan lagi, perhebatkan lagi kita punya influence especially social media. Right? Sebab kita ada tanggungjawab untuk memberitahu dia orang truth, the truth. Right? Alright, second, infrastructure. To produce high quality video, you need good quality equipment lah. Eh? Uh, tapi this is subjective, this is, kita tak boleh nak paksa orang semua beli iPad ke apa ke semua kan. I, I don't use iPad, I use Vivo, uh, y, Vivo V19 or something like that, Vivo V19. Itu pun sebab saya punya phone lama dah termasuk toilet kan. Eh? So beli baru, eh tengok eh cantik pula, okey lah. And then equipment must be mobile as well. For example, uh, macam <laughs> macam now, I cannot do my recording at home. Uh, so, stress, stress, stress. I said to my husband, I, I need to find a space yang conducive space. So, terpaksa lah bawa all my, uh, my apa ni, tripod lah, apa lah semua kena bawa kan. So, uh, mobile, kena mobile lah. Software, software uh, we need to be ready to invest heavily in new apps without support daripada school, without support from grant, without support from that. 
ni lah banyak banyak kalau if you ask Prof Karim pun dia pun cakap uh, tak payahlah harap sangat kot we can try we can try macam Dr Nick dia nak apa saya kata pergi try saja hantar saja we can try but kalau tak dapat jangan pras okay kita 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 anggap itu sebagai pelabur akhirat kita lah eh and then but but our school very uh, very supportive, supportive. Ha, uh, dekan kami memang terbaik lah semua dia kata boleh uh, boleh sign je dia sign je uh, okay. supportive kena supportive very lah. supportive Profina <laughs> and then uh, skills uh, uh, we have problem here skip. Uh, I'm not talking about others I'm talking about myself mula-mula malu-malu malu-malu je lah tak pernah masuk kan video so tiba-tiba you nak showcase your face kan So, uh, tapi lama kelamaan you think that, eh, it is not my face lah. I need to, I have the responsibility, I must tell them in a most effective way. So, I found that cara macam tu ada suitable untuk saya. Alright. Number two, skills ramai yang tak confident. I pun confused. Uh, tak, tak, uh, tak, I tak nak lah, Dr. Emma. Suara I tak sedap, tak macam you. Ha? Eh, <laughs> be confident. We are lecturers lah. Huh? suara tak sedap mah muka ai tak runcing lah uh, kata so ai cakap eh you you rasa muka ai runcing sangat ke eh we have techniques lah in front of camera how to show how to look less less uh, weightage kan so kita ada teknik all this kind of thing and then not passionate we cannot paksa but we can encourage technical skill not willing to learn they're not willing to learn nak edit semua-semua tu especially 40 and above lah. Yelah, nak guna tu semua nak spek turun bawah naik atas, turun bawah naik atas dan malas dah semua kan. So, ada yang not willing to learn. And then, uh, challenges in terms of rewards, uh, uncertain. Because kita tak ada pun template sebenarnya. Kami baru saja, I dengan Nick baru saja we just drafted uh, budget untuk uh, M-Bank punya cost. Baru kami duduk, uh, di lah online kami cakap, okay, uh, we should spend this much, this much uh, uh, untuk buat video, things like that lah. Kita baru saja duduk. So, the reward is a bit uncertain. And then, um, ambiguous monetary reward and sometimes you need to fight. You need to fight uh, for the for the rewards lah ya. Yeah? So, because that is your right. Kalau kita saja, kita, kita kata boleh, kita, kita memang boleh cakap kita visa bililah kan. Tapi kawan-kawan kita, Fisabilillah, fisabilillah juga. But we need to recognize lah eh. After all, kita kan buat kerja dalam team kan. Tak best lah. Tak cuba sorang. Okay, I move on to uh, quality and look uh, and looking forward lah ya. Eh? Alright. The quality. Of course, the quality is has been subject lah eh. Uh, kami di university baru menubuhkan jawatan kuasa quality micro credential and me and Nick Uh, adalah part of the team. It comprises of several people uh, daripada several schools. Kami baru tubuhkan dalam bulan 8, baru dua kali meeting and sangat penat sebenarnya untuk macam mana kita nak determine the the good quality. Eh? Uh, macam mana kita nak assess the acceptable standard? Adakah cara saya yang dikira acceptable? Adakah cara Nick acceptable? So which one? And because we kita ada various delivery format. Uh, orang yang introvert, maybe use animation, maybe use doodle, tak nak display muka. It's okay. Uh, tapi macam mana marks dia orang? Macam mana marks untuk orang extrovert pula? Oh, extrovert macam uh, kita orang lah, lebih kurang lah. Key pre- we become the key presenter. Kita kena belajar juga the art of acting. Nak senyum macam mana, sikit-sikit lah eh. Uh, performing in front of camera macam mana how to become a uh, friendly camera friendly tu macam mana susah juga sebenarnya tapi just do it eh? uh, orang macam kami we can categorize ourselves as hybrid both introvert and high, uh, and, and extrovert because uh, after a while kami baru perasan macam eh Nick bukan semua orang nak tengok muka kita lah the whole four minutes kan uh, so kita kena ada muka kita sikit kita kena ada more uh, information yang Uh, graphic sikit lah. Okay. So, uh, we come to that point dah uh, already. Eh? Alright. Looking forward, we believe, we strongly believe that MC is a must. Not because of ourselves, not because of our recognition, but because university and faculty survival. We just imagine people can now learn investing through through practical, through practitioner. 
dekat luar dan practitioner pun ada buat micro credential. So dekat mana kita stand sekarang? Dekat mana kita stand? Dahlah kita limo on theory base. Tak banyak on practical base. Macam mana we can masuk sekarang? So it is more on uh, university and faculty survival. Nah. Second, university must have MCs to ensure they can pull credible knowledge. Okay, kita dianugerahkan Allah dengan uh, dengan dengan ilmu buat PhD, kita dah experience all those kind of things. Macam mana now kita nak use that uh, credibility untuk sampaikan benda yang benar. Academics Uh, buat micro credential walaupun banyak perkara but because it involves both the usage of right brain and left brain we tend to be happier okay and not confined with traditional way of teaching if you ask me and Dian kami memang selalu gelak lah memang our our life actually berubah from last year last year kita dah duduk dalam bilik saja yalah buat research mengajar prepare mengajar saja kan tapi since kita ada Uh, micro credential uh, memang memang hidup kami lebih lively lah eh and then kita lebih ceria kita lebih ceria lah walaupun stress walaupun dah kena makan ubat pressure ubat kolesterol sekarang kan <laughs> tapi lebih happier lah okay and then uh, looking forward I would hope that there is there is significant rewards and recognition by the top okay uh, professor kami alhamdulillah professor Risi okay tapi kalau macam usim um, Kena ada key person yang kena convince okay, that MC kena ada and to boost MC developers moral eh. Because orang-orang buat MC ni, I have to say rare lah, rare. Because you are using both left brain and right brain simultaneously. Okay, and how, bukan setakat dia orang instruct, tapi macam mana translate the recognition uh, into KPI, macam mana you nak translate into promotion. Orang buat MC banyak-banyak tapi tak kena promote, tak syok lah kan. So, so, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then, I'm also looking forward more collaboration across universities, industries. Dan kita kena humble, we must be humble. We have to acknowledge that ilmu kita, kita tak boleh nak buat the whole thing. That's why I encourage friends from PUSIM, from many universities, sama-sama lah, uh, kalau I buat financial literacy, okay, you boleh buat benda lain, you boleh buat benda lain. That's flood the internet with credible information, with low cost, eh? low cost of free. Uh, free ni. Universities, uh, I hope, I am looking forward for universities to produce media. Okay, produce such as, kan kita tengok dekat Facebook kan, in the know, uh, ataupun World Economic Forum, kan dia punya platform media tu, in which the contents is retrieved from our research. Kita ni buat research ni. Okay. Masuk journal. Uh, journal pula sekarang. Nak journal non-cited lah. Journal cited lah. But okay. Fine. Dah masuk journal. So. Contribution towards community macam mana? We need to tell community. Apa. Apa discussion yang kita dah buat. Apa research yang kita dah buat. And of course. Community tak akan nak baca journal kita. Kita pun tak, tak nak nak baca journal kita. Apa lagi community nak baca. Dia orang tak baca. So what is the best way. To sampaikan research kita, I hope ada platform, ada recognition, ada effort daripada universiti untuk buat benda tu dan menjadikan dia macam uh, macam video lah, video clips eh? macam video clips yang World Economic Forum ada, HBR ada, buat macam tu. Uh, so basically though, uh, I'm looking forward to all those things lah eh. Um, Our motivation is simply, orang kata micro credential ni tak berguru lah, lutut tak bertemu lutut lah and things like that lah orang cakap kan. But I, I hold this thing lah from Sadina Ali ya. Yeah. Uh, do not force your children to behave like you. For surely they have been created for a time which is different from uh, to your time. Jadi kan ajarlah anak kita mengikut macam mana zaman dia. Kan kita tak boleh nak style cara kita dah lagi kan. Bertuah sangat kalau kita boleh buat macam tu. Bertuah sangat. Tetapi uh, tapi bukan bukan senang nak capai macam tu dah sekarang. Tapi because kita akademik, uh, I believe that we are all passionate and giving knowledge. Kita gunalah apa saja medium yang ada sementara ni supaya ia boleh dikira sebagai jabatan akhirat kita. Uh, kita provide ilmu jabatan akhirat kita. Dan kalau kita ada peluang uh, untuk mengajar Uh, ni I believe that the true learners yang akan jumpa kita Bukan lagi macam dulu Dulu mak bapak paksa you masuk kelas you kena belajar kan 
sekarang online, kita pun nampak kan, online ada budak buat, ada budak tak buat. It means that now it is time, the next one, it is time kita akan berjumpa dengan true learners. Orang yang betul-betul nak belajar dengan kita yang akan berguru berlutut, berlutut dengan lutut dengan kita. Tetapi uh, untuk masa sekarang, bebaskan ilmu lah dengan cara zaman zaman sekarang lah. Itu je daripada saya dan Nick. Nick, anda nak kongsi apa-apa lagi ni? Tak ada rasa Imah. Okay. Kita saja Umi. Wah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, very big applause to uh, Dr. Emma and also Dr. Nick uh, Hadian. Uh, all the way from USM. Yeah, all the way. <laughs> Virtually. <laughs> But uh, we can feel the excitement of uh, your experience. Kan bila bila kita uh, buat apa yang kita cakap sebenarnya dia punya uh, aura tu lebih lebih apa terasa lah kan. So I believe uh, because it is already becoming your 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 passion. So memang kita akan cari ilmu, akan cari uh, banyak mentor macam-macam cara untuk make sure yang apa kita buat ni bukan uh, separuh jalan dan juga uh, will 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 attract uh, lagi ramai orang eh. So uh, basically, uh, oh dah dekat sejam juga eh. <laughs> Sejak je masa sebenarnya. Uh, so I I open to uh, the rest of the uh, apa tu kita punya audience participants uh, siapa yang nak bertanya walaupun ada dah tanya dalam chat room tadi uh, but the rest yang nak nak bertanya kepada our speakers today uh, please you can unmute uh, and then uh, shoot away uh, apa uh, shoot your question uh, mine is very basic uh, whereby I I got two questions satu is how do you charge your micro credential punya classes is it that kita charge them after they have done the assignment ke before ke because um, our idea actually to do micro credential is like a teaser dulu towards our main academic programs you know uh, that's one thing yang kedua tu ialah uh, daripada segi technical support tu Cause kita memang sini memang dah potong-potong budget. That's what I heard. <laughs> For next year pun dah potong budget dah tengah tu. So, tak adalah budgetnya. Kita kena menagih simpati. <laughs> um, and and we, we are very lucky because we have some supporters. Uh, dengar saja nama University Science Islam Malaysia untuk students ke. Uh, then Alhamdulillah. And then we also got daripada kita punya wakaf. Uh, so dia bolehlah support-support in a way tapi benda-benda macam you kata nak beli gadget-gadget tu susah sikit lah kan. Uh, so uh, daripada segi daripada segi fine, uh, technical support tu you dapat daripada siapa tu? Because I, I'm I'm worried that we don't get the viewership that we want. Uh. Uh, Nick ke macam mana? Technical uh, support daripada segi gadget ke? Ya, technical support daripada segi macam tu lah. Macam you, kita tak tahu nak pakai macam mana. Oh. Feel, ah, feel more uh, to, uh, things All like right. this kan. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. okay, we have to say the apps kami belajar sendiri. Ah. <laughs> so, belajar sendiri, uh, through YouTube. Saya belajar sendiri through YouTube. Uh, uh. Macam uh, DIM pun belajar sendiri, uh, feel more. Hmm. Tapi after that, uh, kami share the knowledge uh, melalui uh, ni lah, uh, bengkel, things like that. Uh, bengkel hands on kan kita ada hands on so hmm. kita ask them to buat you know, and then kami ajar uh, hmm. kami ajar macam tu uh, kalau studio studio I can say uh, bocor sikit rahsia studio kami tak sampai RM10,000 RM15,000 campur kamera kot uh, tak hmm. sampai pun okay. sebenarnya uh, cuma kami perlu pin and kalau kalau misalnya uh, Dr. Umi and several others memang nak buat benda ni you kena jadi lead Lepas tu, you yang macam biasalah kan, kita yang jadi uh, price determiner sebenarnya. Uh, kita cakap, tak boleh Prof, yang ni kena macam ni Prof. Kalau macam ni, baru macam ni Prof. Kita kena jadi expert dalam benda tu untuk determine and convince that uh, kita perlukan benda-benda ni uh, untuk support kita. Hmm. Actually, uh, Dr. Adlin, uh, kita before kita beli satu-satu apps tu, dia ada, penye, dia ada uh, free version. Hmm. So maybe untuk for for the beginner, kita boleh dulu guna untuk free, uh, free version. 
saya dah survey uh, semua apps yang ada yang paling Nek putus eh? Nek putus Nek? Dia disconnected Hmm uh, Okay saya sambung sikit uh, so, Kalau Nek dia guna Filmora So uh, Filmora dia mahal sikit Dia RM400 Tapi yelah masa nak bayar tu macam Dia mengadu lah macam mana ni Kemana nak bayar RM400 eh? Kata I'm try apply I'm try apply dekat dekat Cakap dekat dekat kita ni Ada try lah and dia dapat Kata dapat, uh, tetapi license tu kita share lah dengan kawan-kawan yang nak guna hmm, film arah kan. Hmm, uh, kita buat okay. macam tu lah. Uh, macam saya guna Kinemaster, uh, saya guna free version dulu. Tapi bila free version, kita ada watermark kan. Bila dah buat several-several tu, macam confidence sikit. And then Prof Karim lah, cakap Prof, uh, Prof Karim kata, Emma belilah Kinemaster tu. So saya belilah, Kinemaster tak mahal sangat. Dalam berapa puluh ringgit saja. Hmm. Uh, so okey lah. Hmm. Sesuai lah, uh, saya tak perlu banyak sangat benda dalam tu. Uh, but okay lah uh. Okay uh, mungkin mungkin uh, lead to uh, apa Kak Lim punya soalan So maknanya uh, lebih, uh, apa dari segi platform Belum lagi dekat saya pun belum okay, Sorry dari segi, sorry Dari segi platform uh, apa tu uh, Server tu adakah hmm. guna USM punya server ataupun maknanya it is open open punya open access ke macam mana Okay ada dua macam ni. Uh, kalau micro credential kami adalah under USM, kami guna uh, platform server uh, USM. USM subscribe dekat Open Learning tak salah saya. Open Learning. Technically saya tak tahu pasal Open Learning. Pasal Open Learning tu di manage oleh CDAE under Prof Karim lah. Cuma bila kami dah buat video-video, saya dengan Nick kami prefer video kami masuk YouTube. Kami tak suka terus masuk upload dalam Open Learning. Maknanya kami upload dalam YouTube because uh, YouTube kan cloud kan lagi besar server dia. So hmm. link tu kami linkkan dekat Open Learning. Jadi apabila orang hmm. terpaksa masuk Open Learning, they can view kami punya dekat YouTube. Okay, nanti orang tanyalah pula. So kalau you punya dalam YouTube, tak payahlah kami enroll dalam you punya course. No. Bila kita dalam ni, kita ada buat satu lagi video special untuk yang subscribe, uh, yang orang kata the learners uh, yang membayar ni kan. Kita ada, dia orang dapat, uh, dia orang dapat credential lah, digital badge, things hmm. macam tu lah. Dia hmm. belajar, hmm. Kuih, so, assessment, uh-huh. things macam tu. Hmm. Basically, uh, kalau nak charge tu, that means dia kita uh, entice them with the digital badge. Yes. Otherwise dia dapat dia just belajar gitu aje lah dapat sharing of knowledge. Ah, Itu saja. Dekat YouTube saja lah. Dekat YouTube ah, dia orang belajar kan. Ah. Tapi hmm. nak kata uh, Prof Karim pun sekarang tengah uh, usaha untuk benda ni macam kalau kita dah ada micro credential banyak-banyak macam mana kita nak the digital badge tu is recognized untuk curriculum untuk orang luar kan curriculum untuk Bersamaan dengan berapa sijil ke apa ke Ah, ha, tu that's ah, right yang, ha, yes. ah, yang tu under Prof Karim Lifelong learning lah maknanya Lifelong kan learning and yes. the mm-hmm. Apple things kan mm-hmm. Ha. Mm-hmm. Mm. So maknanya yang itu uh, Belum lagi lah belum Itu belum lagi lah. Masih susah Kami uh, Kita ada dua sekarang Satu quality uh, Ada isu dekat quality Dan satu lagi adalah Uh, one of my friends dia uh, dia tengah deal macam mana the structure SLT semulalah hmm dokumen hmm. lah contoh, hmm. contohnya 10 minit video equivalent to one uh, unit uh, things lah hmm. macam tu hmm. tengah hmm. uh, calculating on that lah hmm. itulah yang paling kita tak suka ah. <laughs> Yeah, Kopa kebana, dia yeah. saya call ini kopa kebana. Yeah, ada kopa things kan. Kos <laughs> uh, 10 minit yeah. macam mana pula? And then, mm. dia orang tanya kami, kos 10 minit, eh, 10 minit tu panjang sangat lah. Student bukan yes, ada. Yes, yes, betul. Kan? Uh, dia, kita ajar attention rate teknikal. dia tu kan kurang ha, sikit. Kita hmm. ajar technical, finance kan, ajar technical. Hmm. Macam mana uh, graph ni apa, uh, expected return lah apa benda. Bila kita tengok tak sampai belum 20 view out of let's say 60 orang kan. Tak lah. Hmm. So, uh, kena fikir cara lain pula. So, hmm. banyak benda lah nak kena fikir dekat situ. Hmm. Okay. So, maknanya uh, in terms of uh, apa documentation, uh, Dr. Emma belum lagi involved dengan tu lah. Just Document. buat content je sekarang ni. Content je. Content. Documentation kopak 
Ah, tu lah maknanya belum, belum, bukan, bukan, belum. bukan. Ah, that one uh, still scratch. Hmm. Uh, still tak scratch. apa, kita akan start lah maknanya kita kena start dulu kan? Start ah, dulu. Ah. Because kalau start kalau kita tak start, <laughs> yang yang draft tu, dia tak tahu the nature. Yes. Contohnya, kalau kita hmm. nak bagi markah dekat micro credential, you bagi markah satu dekat micro credential yang ada let's say four videos. Kata eh you bagi satu Ingat nak buat video senang ke So kita boleh Betul. argue lah, kan? hmm. Buat video ada macam ni macam ni So uh, kita boleh argue lah hmm. Uh. Hmm. Because video ni dia kena pack everything Macam like you said lah Your, your son main kan So uh. the game itself is all packed With lots of information But very very applied Yes. Mm. Uh. So that's not easy actually Betul That's, not easy. <laughs> that's why kata hmm. Bila kita tengok kawan-kawan kita yang Buat kan, uh, kita feel obliged lah for the top untuk recognize them. Mm-hmm. Sian lah kan. Ha. Yes, yes. Hmm. Okay, okay. So ada lagi tak uh, uh, soalan daripada uh, audience yang lain? Kalau ada. Okay, Dari daripada ni. Tengok daripada group chat ni, uh, Dr. Hati ni tanya, when we try to make the video, is it at first try and error before sharing on YouTube? Okay. This one. Kalau misalnya first time, katalah kita tak confident. Dan kita kadang-kadang ni ada macam pelik kan. Kita ni kadang-kadang dah ada doktor, dah profesor Madia semua. Tapi kita macam, kita sendiri macam tak confident. Saya sendiri rasa macam tu. Eh takutlah. Sekarang masuk YouTube, orang dapat tahu. Sekarang salah pula information. Kan? Kalau tak confident, dekat you, you publish dalam YouTube. Tapi you tukar dia punya listing kepada unlisted. Mana you tak publicize kan. You tukar pada unlisted. It means that people yang dapat you punya link sahaja yang boleh buka. Okay. In that hmm. case, you boleh minimize the risk of getting nasty comment. Sebab saya pernah dapat nasty comment from industry. Ha, saya buat pasal oh. insurance. Lepas tu orang DM cakap, you buat ni outdated lah bla 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 lah semua-semua kan. Tapi hmm. bertambah sajalah. Okay, kita buat sajalah hmm. kan. Hmm. Uh, so, kenapa? kenapa saya encourage you all buat dekat YouTube? Because server university tak besar. Sebab so, universiti besar macam mana pun dia kata tak besar sebenarnya. Okay. Especially kalau nak exam, kita masuk dalam muda e-learning, things like that. Tiba-tiba hmm. ramai jam dekat situ. Ah, Betul. Satu hmm. hal kan. So saya kata hmm. dengan kelis, you buat dekat YouTube. You buat unlisted. Link tu you bagi. So bila dia orang open browser, dia orang tak masuk server universiti. Dia orang masuk server cloud. Kan. Ah. So kita, that's why saya bubuh dalam YouTube saya punya videos Yang kalau yang saya kata saya tak nak public, saya buat unlisted lah Kalau saya kata saya nak private, saya private kan Macam tu saja. After you done the recording, then you can unlist ya? Yeah? Ah boleh, kita masuk, uh-huh. kita publish dekat ah, ni, kita tekan kat situ unlisted So okay, mm-hmm. boleh ah, hmm. Kita dengan kita punya uh, student je boleh tengok ah, Kadang-kadang kita tak confident mm-hmm. lagi kan Okay mm-hmm. Uh, content wise will be upgraded for semester to semester Okay, content kalau kita tengok dalam content kita ada two types of content The first one is the grounded content Contohnya kita belajar micro, uh, macro economy or micro economics Okay, what is demand? Law of demand says that this, 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 this That is grounded, already grounded You pergi dekat buku mana, the definition is that Alright, so that kind of uh, content You don't have to change every year Sebenarnya semester depan, you boleh cakap dengan student, student, you can see my last semester video because that video content uh, contains the grounded contents. However, kalau kita nak cerita mengenai contemporary content, kan, statistic, we need to produce another video yang lebih contemporary lah. Contohnya coronavirus, the impact of economics in 2020, ya, coronavirus. Alright. Uh, uh, itu contemporary lah. It is not well grounded yet. So hmm. yang tu memang kita kena tukar. Entah-entah tahun depan aku benda pula lagi. So yang tu memang kita kita kena keep up dengan trend. So two types of content. Okay, just recognize after recording, review balik video mata asyik terkelip-kelip. Any tips how to reduce that? Ah, right. Macam mana? Mata kalau boleh tengok balik, oh perasan. Oh rupanya mata asyik terkelip-kelip. Tak perasan pun semuanya. Uh, yang tu you need to know kenapa mata terkelip-kelip. Sometimes you call dry eyes. Ah, uh, because dry eyes kan so terkelip-kelip. Macam I, I have problem dulu bila start nak bercakap, mulut tu over sangat. Mulut tu over sangat. Bila tengok, Allah, Allah, overnya mulut. 
tapi after a while you belajar so you 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 belajarlah macam mana nak control facial expression things like that gerak-gerak dan baru kita perasan sebenarnya aku dekat depan studio aku buat macam ni ke baru kita perasan sebenarnya kan alright uh, Okay, ada lagi soalan. Doktor Nick, uh, hadiah dia try masuk tapi dia dia punya Sebab Doktor saya ada nak tanya. Ya yeah, boleh. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Doktor Imah saya Hamiza, staff di uh, JSM. Uh-huh. Uh, staff di fakulti. Saya uh, nak tanya, mungkin uh, tadi doktor ada cakap yang MC ni uh, uh, seasonal. Ada orang cakap MC ni uh, seasonal. Ah, ya, maha. Ah, once kalau macam memang sekarang ni semua online. Once uh, pandemi ni pun dah beransur dan um, everything uh, back to normal Apa strategi uh, uh, USM untuk MC ni? Adakah macam masih diteruskan ataupun macam uh, mana? Okay, the person yang cakap benda tu seasonal is because dia tak nampak the nature of atau ke keperluan MC pada zaman sekarang Alright, because dia biasa dengan research Okay, because uh, macam University Science, uh, kita punya komponen or research weightage tu tinggi sikit lah. So that's why, dia orang semua puluh dekat research. Yelah, kami-kami semua puluh dekat research lah. Dia tak nampak that micro credential is ke? very relevant. Okay, for me, walaupun katalah Prof, VC dah turun ke semua ke kan, benda ni akan sentiasa ada. Because why? Because we have competition daripada outsiders. Can you just imagine? If yes. university, university can make money kan? University makes money daripada let's stop yelah business kan? University makes money from from uh, charge the fees, things like that. We know the trend that kemudian-kemudian hari may not many people enroll in our physical classes. Hmm. Okay? So alternatively, kita kena ada virtual class. Okay, just imagine if we do not have that virtual class and our money daripada physical class makin turun and the competition daripada outsiders, practical people, practitioner menggunakan uh, ni makin lama makin tinggi. So, where do we stand sekarang? I I always believe that um, kita kena ada micro credential yang sentiasa up to date right? supaya first, survival. Second, kita sebagai akademik, we want our uh, we want our ilmu to be disseminated more uh, uh, beyond four walls. Contohnya video saya, uh, kelas ada 88 orang. So kita expect roughly 88 views lah. Tiba-tiba tengok-tengok ada 200 views. Mana datang lagi yang ramai-ramai. So uh, so kita expect, kita tak, tak boleh tahu kan siapa tengok. Tapi at least kita ada sikit kepercayaan, believe that oh okay, orang lain pun Tengok juga, that is where the satisfactory uh, satisfaction comes from lah. Orang luar, orang daripada negara lain pun tengok kita punya uh, ni. Especially contents yang Malaysian based. Ah, hmm. uh, coronavirus, Malaysia case, uh, things like that. Eh, uh, Islamic. That's why I kata Islamic ni ramai orang orang nak tengok eh, Islamic punya ni. So you have a brighter future lah in front of you. Hmm. Bila orang search kan dekat dekat YouTube punya search engine tu kan So kalau Islamic marketing ha, keluar yes. kat list dia apa video Kan bombastik <laughs> juga kan Ha, hmm. you can imagine hmm. uh, pahala kita kan mengalir bukan setakat dalam kelas saja Tetapi orang luar daripada kita pun tahu trend sekarang Muslim makin lama makin ramai semua kan People wants to know apa benda Islamic marketing ni Ah, tiba-tiba kita ada video yang tu. So, hmm. and potential untuk orang enroll ke fizikal class, fizikal class tinggi lah. Hmm. Okay, okay alright. Okay, bersemangat semua orang. Okay, uh, ada lagi soalan dari uh, peserta kalau tak ada um, sebab ni pun dah nearly one o'clock. So, perut pun dah lapar. Uh, hey. <laughs> Perut kat Emma lah apa? Kerja. Speaker dah lah kita tak bagi air kan. So air. Dapat virtually. Virtually dapat. 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 Ada lagi tak kat situ Dr. Nick? Are you there? Dr. Nick tak appear dekat apa? 
dekat uh, video. Okay, cuba-cuba last last word last word eh. Mm -hmm. Let's say kalau uh, Umi and the team want, nak buat kan, Kena banyak bersabar dengan rakan-rakan yang ni Dan kita kena tolong sama-sama Because not everybody is as fast as us And benda ni because tak ada ground lagi kan So tolerate lah kena banyak-banyak tolerate And banyak-banyak motivate each other Okay jangan macam Alah setakat video macam tu No 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 we must motivate That is what I learn from Prof Karim Yes So I think the most important uh, apa point juga dekat sini is uh, when you have a good leadership uh, maknanya uh, as uh, indirectly dia motivate you kan. So yeah. benda yang daripada tak ada pun dia boleh ada. Mm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we learn uh, new things hari ni Alhamdulillah kan Kak Din. Uh, siapa lagi uh, Dr. Tini, Dr. Uh, Natasha. Uh, sebab uh, actually at the moment kita pun ada lagi satu live ni on collaboration uh, learning dekat MS Teams. Okay. So dia uh, yang tu orang-orang pergi juga. So that's why dia uh, apa uh, divide uh, participants lah. Okay Hamilah uh, we learn about uh, gig educators. So new things, new terms yang sebenarnya uh, macam yang tadi Dr. Emma mention kita kena sama-sama uh, maknanya ubah cara uh, pengajaran our teaching and learning ikut konteks, ikut zaman uh, tak boleh ikutlah maknanya dulu kita belajar uh, face to face kita belajar uh, pergi ke uh, lecture hall but uh, nowadays uh, maybe in the future lagi lah kita tak tahu macam mana cara dia so kita nak tak nak kita kena adapt dan adopt lah semua perkara tu so thank you very much again Dr. Emma And Dr. 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 Nick. So insyaAllah uh, lepas ni kalau kita perlukan lagi your assistance, uh, kita akan contact eh. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay, so before we, we end the session, can we uh, hmm. your, 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 <laughs> ha, Dr. Nick. Can you uh, <laughs> switch, switch on your stable, videos? Lah. Oh yeah, awak tak boleh buka video eh. Tak stable eh. Hmm. Uh, Miza, boleh kita ambil gambar semua orang Miza? Uh, switch boleh, on boleh. the video, switch on uh, video. Yeah. On your video, nanti Miza tolong ambilkan gambar. Kena stop uh, sharing ni. Dr. Nih. Emma boleh uh, apa apa uh, leave yang share screen tu? Stop, stop sharing ya. Eh? Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Okay. Hey Kak Tasha. <laughs> Hai Tasha. Tasha rumit saya. Oh, okay, saya. Hmm. Ya, Baba nak nak talk hmm. ni pasal apa geng-geng. Lama takut sembang benda lain. Hmm. Okay. Saya okay, ambil gambar. Ha ah, Miza ambil print screen pun okey. Saya 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 Sorry terkeluar Penang eh. <laughs> okay. Okay, one, two, three. Thank you.